an architectural rendering shows a highly crafted image of what your building proposal is intended to look like. The goal for any rendering is to show an aspect or components of your proposal that cannot be explained through drawings, sections, that kind of stuff. Any rendering should really be to illustrate in a new way how spaces work and interact with one another while at the same time showing how people interact with the building. So today I will be giving a tutorial as to how I render and I wanted to just break this process down into simple digestible steps. A while ago I posted a 24 hour rendering challenge and you guys asked me to do a tutorial as to how to actually make a render. So. Here it is. Hey guys, it is your girl Nan here. I am back with a new tutorial for you all. I do hope this helps out other architecture students. Our Discord is also filled with a bunch of other architecture students. Please consider joining that if you want to engage in more architecture talk outside of studio time. But before we hop into the software, let me explain to you what software I use. So I use a rendering program called V-Ray. It is a plugin for Rhino. I use this to render out all my base images and I typically will render out three to four and they have different mapped textures on each of these based images and I will superimpose all of my renders in Photoshop. You can really, really do so much in Photoshop and I highly, highly recommend not just putting whatever V-Ray spit out as your final render on your boards. Really spruce it up and I will just show you how I render in Photoshop today. I model it, texture map it, V-Ray render it, export the drawing, export the image, and then put everything in Photoshop and do a little magic to it and out pops a good render. Here are some of the examples of renders I produced for my first project at UPAD, but I hope that this really does help you out. And let's just get right into it. So the key for any good render is finding that good dramatic view. Most successful renders don't just render out the building, but it's great to show some site context and look at reference images. Here I am gathering a bunch of textures using this as my inspiration for texture mapping, which I'll show later on. To make a seamless texture, you use the offset filter in Photoshop and then right click in Photoshop and just do fill content aware. Do this for all of your textures, just so it looks seamless when you apply them in Rhino. So now we're back in Rhino. I apply all of my materials using the Rhino render so just make sure that's your current render setting. You can apply by layer so this is also a great opportunity for you to separate all of your layers of your rhino geometry based on what material they are. So I have this copper piping that is on one layer and then my concrete masses are on a different layer. Texture mapping is another thing that I do in rhino and basically you just go to your properties, apply a box map, and change the repeat or offset whatever looks best for you. If you have a wood texture like I do, you are probably going to have to individually select each direction and texture map and rotate it respectively. Also, please texture map your interiors when you render. It is noticeable, we can tell as a viewer, and it'll just look more cohesive and put together. So just put in the time. Go through all of your images. Um, Google Earth has some, but these were taken by my classmates at the site in Philadelphia. Just trying to line it up and be absolutely critical here because this is super important. You can clearly go back in Photoshop and adjust the perspective so it doesn't have to be perfect, but try your hardest. Now you can see I'm doing a test V-Ray render, playing with the Rhino sun and making sure the shadows line up. Okay, let's talk about lighting. Model a basic can light and create a emissive material. Please copy all of my settings. Make sure you just pause the video and reference it later. But you wanna make sure that your emissive material actually emits some sort of light. So this material will actually be for the bulb of the can light, um, aka the white part, not the green rim. And I am just playing with what color is diffused when it is actually rendered out. So here you can see I wanted that effect. The next thing you want to add is the cone light. So here you can see I am adjusting that, making sure everything looks very proportional and appropriate. Going through render settings, adjusting the color, the 
mission settings. Once again, just pause the video and reference it later. It takes a lot of trial and error, but you wanna make sure you have that soft, glowy look. A pro tip when it comes for playing around with V-Ray lights is to make sure that your light isn't a pure white. Have it be very warm and more yellow toned and you'll actually have a more realistic look. Definitely play around with the intensity and how much light you want bouncing off of your walls. So do some more tests using that V-Ray interactive render and go from there. Just to quickly touch my V-Ray settings, I always render out pretty large. It's better to have a higher resolution than a small and make sure you include an alpha channel and you just access that in your extra settings on the right hand pull out tab. So I imported some brushes. I'll link the website down below. And here in Photoshop, we are just lining everything up. This is one of your benefits of rendering out an alpha channel is that you can quickly select your glass and what you want to be more transparent in your render. Highly recommend always saving your alphas, but also saving your raw shadows that are produced in V-Ray. If you have any questions about it, please leave me a comment down below. Yeah, so I think the quickest way to spruce up any render is to erase whatever sky you have and include a more dramatic one. I always like the uh, really warm toned skies. I think they're very pretty. So as you can see, I am including some foliage. How do you do that, you might ask? Using those imported brushes that you found online, you just make a clipping mask in Photoshop. You fill that clipping mask with black and you just brush away. You can play around with your brush settings. I found that the scattering option in my brush settings was absolutely critical for the success of this render. Now I understand foliage won't be really a part of your architecture altogether, but it is good to know the these kinds of tips and tricks because hopefully your architecture has at least a tree nearby and you can honestly fake a tree in Photoshop. Another thing that is part of our daily lives are shadows because we have this beautiful thing in the sky called the sun. So yeah, gotta love that star up there and she's always going to be casting shadows. So fake it till you make it, okay? Fake these shadows on your light poles. Another filter option that you can use in Photoshop is doing a Gaussian blur with all your shadows. It makes them softer. Also, don't forget to fake all of the reflections as well. So as you can see, you can see the ugly existing train station reflection on this car um, and just look at the details. Lastly, one of the chef's kisses, sprinkles on top, whatever you want to call it for your renders, applying a photo filter or a color lookup on top of all of your layers. Basically, it's like the Instagram filter of Photoshop. It just changes slightly all of the colors and you have a more uniform render as a result. I want to touch on a couple last minute things and tricks. Please double check everything, your surrounding buildings, your background images, just to make sure nothing is stealing the spotlight from your architectural rendering. So for instance, that red building on the left was taking too much attention and I had it desaturated. The same thing with these red stoplights. Adding interior lights to a nighttime render is absolutely critical for its success. Make sure everything has a shadow and a highlight. So adding more shadows and highlights to the foliage on the front, making sure my light for the interiors is very dramatic and it pops. Also making sure that your adjacent buildings are perpendicular to the ground and cleaning up those edges. So here you can see it looks very fake. It looks very photoshopped and fake. It was too light. So darkening your edges up where it needs to be, you know what it's supposed to look like and go from there. It's gonna take several layers, several iterations. I also wanna say doing renders is a really great way to learn more about your project. My project has changed significantly since this and I just want to say you can learn a lot about your project and where you want to take it after you do a render. So give it your all and let me know if you want a finals week prep with me kind of 
video um, since that's quickly approaching. So these were the two renders that I did for school and let me know what you guys think. Well, that was it for today's tutorial. Please leave me a like if this did help out. Consider joining our Discord, supporting me on Patreon. It does help me out so much. And I just hope that you found some value in this video. Be sure to subscribe and I will see you guys in the next video. Love you guys.